ISK, the main currency and lifeblood of EVE. You can't live without it, and if you have loads of the stuff, you can fly expensive ships into dangerous situations with no fear of having to replace them. There are many ways to make it, and at the start of your EVE life, this can be a perplexing mystery. So what follows is the continuation of the definitive guide to how I do it. For EVE ISK Fast, I'm Mervyn Gankos. Now before we begin today, I'd like to address one suggestion that I got from a well-meaning source. One of you has asked if I wouldn't mind changing my beautiful off-white background for something darker, because it hurts his dainty little eyes. So without losing any of my cleanliness of form, I have come up with this. Or this. Or how about this? Is that any better? Yeah, I thought not. Back to white. But just because I'm so nice, I'll dim it a little and may even remember to keep it that way. Can't say fairer than that now, can you? And now on with the show and the continuation of our guide to Fast Isk through Nullsec Exploration Part 7. Train Exploration in a Wormhole Sounds crazy, right? Well, it is. And you will lose ships, but nothing will learn you like glass. Wormholes, in my view, are more dangerous than null. You can't see who is in the system, and you really have to be on your toes. So they'll teach you to hit D-scan every time your finger isn't doing something more important. They'll give you the experience to react calmly and attempt an escape when someone comes after you, rather than just panicking. And in a wormhole, you might as well assume that a wingspan covert ops fleet is always watching you. Do wormholes for a while, lose a few ships, and null will seem much easier. Once you have your ship fitted and stocked, it's time to go to nullsec. Numping or null jumping goes like this. So you're probably best to find a quiet place, you need to be in a fleet and decloaked, and you just use your needle jack. Then there's a fancy pants animation and the name of the system to which you're going will appear briefly on your HUD. The next thing you'll see is the local chat window. If you're the only one in it, you can relax. If there are people in the new system, then things are different. You need to be cloaked as soon as possible. And here's the most important rule of being outside high sec. Never break cloak unless it's absolutely necessary. Whatever you're going to do, the quicker you can do it, the better it will be for the continued non-explosion of your lovely ship. Hit Alt-P to bring up your probe window. You should see the system map and the list of signatures. If this is not the case, then sort it out, you dunderpants. We'll do a HUD video at some stage, I'm sure, but for now we're going to assume you have this figured out. When you land in the Nullsec system, you'll be near a celestial object, unfortunately, and you can be found. As a general rule, if there are a lot of people in the system, just cloak. You're not going to be doing any scanning here. If there are no red signatures, just cloak, because you're not going to be doing any scanning here. If there are around five people or less, well, you need to get your probes out and cloaked before they're able to see you on D-scan. We'll proceed as if this is the case. Warping to a moon used to be my favourite thing to do, but then I found out about player-owned starbases, which are anchored to moons and have lots of big shooty guns usually. I've never had a problem warping to a moon at 100km, but New Eden is a constantly surprising place, and you never know when it's going to poke you in the eye with a stick covered in dog turds. Warping to a planet is safer, but so many times have I done this only to bounce off a customs office and decloak. The safest thing to do is have customs offices available in your overview warp to one of those at 100 kilometers and you're probably going to be okay and don't just warp there now is the time where we have to get very swift with our clicking the following has to be done in quick succession with no delay initiate warp at 100 kilometers launch probes drag them out here hit analyze cloak control b pause when you're around halfway between your origin and destination hit enter to drop a bookmark Warp back to the bookmark you just made, select another destination, repeat the process to give you a double safe spot. Congratulations. You can't be scanned down, you can't be decloaked, and you can probe scan any of the signatures in the system if you so choose. Now, if there are a lot of players in the system, you can often find them on D-Scan to see where they are and figure out what they're doing. Sometimes they'll be busy running sites or mining and may not try to kill you. Maybe you can kill them. Narrow your D-Scan angle, hold V and click on stuff. This will tell you if a player is at a particular site. If you can't see any players on D-Scan, but you know from local chat that they're in the system, they might be in a station. You can warp at 100 kilometers to a citadel, check this little number here, and that will tell you how many players are docked. Checking Z-Kill is another idea. 
If a player shows up in local chat but not on Zkill, they could be someone's industry alt and are probably harmless. Hopefully the system will be clear of dangerous Brian's and you can work unhindered. Scanning down the signatures is easy and it should be fast. It will be if you follow these instructions. The four astrometric skills will help you here. If you're not using a sister's launcher and probes, then sort that out, you dunderpants. If you have your skills up, then you won't really need implants, boosters, or those annoying astrometrics modules that take up useful space in your ship slots that you could be using to blow people up with. Now, I am continually amazed by how many people don't know how to do this quickly. Pick a signature, click on it to center your view. You should not be using your left mouse button to move your view about, ever, 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 ever. Just use these two buttons at the bottom of your probe scanning window to flip between the XY and XZ axes. If your view is at any other angle, I'll slap you. Analyze the signature and it'll move. Click on the sig in the new location to center your view again. Move the probes over it. You don't need to be accurate. Reduce the probe spread by one click and analyze again. The two actions here are moving your probes and reducing their spread. Sometimes it's easy to forget which of the two steps you've done already. So to avoid this, train yourself only to reduce the probe spread right before you click Analyze. Move. Reduce spread. Analyze. Move. Reduce spread. Analyze. Do it this way every single time and you'll never mess it up. Repeat the process until the site is scanned fully and shown in green. You can run it now if you like but I always scan all the other exploration sites in the system down first. Maybe someone is coming to run sites, and so long as I can keep my probes off their descan and my ship cloaked, I'll have to drop on them. Either way, it's a good idea to set a perch. To set a perch, walk to the site of 100 kilometers. Hit Control-B, set a name. Watch the distance to target. When it gets to around 10,000 kilometers, hit Enter to drop your bookmark. Warp back to the perch you just set. From there you can watch someone running the site and warp directly on top of them. If you think you're being watched, like in a wormhole, you can warp to the perch between cans for safety and speed. As you can see, this is a site belonging to one of the awesome rogue drone events provided by CCP recently. I'm sure going to miss those and the obscene amounts of isk I made running them. Thank you CCP! And now, a tale. You know, one day recently, I was on my way out to fly around really fast, the way you'd be. I was trying out a new ship and trying to form a comfortable ass groove in the seed pad of my new capsule. Eventually, I came upon a ship heading straight into a sun. Well, obviously I had to investigate, so I got the pilot on comms. Greetings, Capsuleer. Now what could you possibly be doing there? Dum 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 Ahem, <coughs> excuse me, Capsuleer, what are you doing? Nobody loves me. I'm so lonely I've had enough of this galaxy. I'm going to fly my ship straight into the sun and then all this intolerable icky pain will be over. What about the people around you? Have you thought about them? Oh, I'm alone in the universe. Nobody will miss me. You must know some people. Maybe we even know someone in common. No, I'm the most solitary person in New Eden. Oh, come on now. You did grow up in New Eden, didn't you? Yes, I grew up in New Eden. Same for me. Are you Amar, Kaldari, Galente, or Minmatar? Minmatar. Same for me. So you're Minmatar. Were you born in Amuld, Ridinjorn, or Holm? I was born in Holm. Same for me. Are you Minmatar Holm Brutor, Minmatar Holm Verokior, or Minmatar Holm Sebester? Minmatar Holm Sebester. Same for me. Minmatar Holm Sebester Pator Tech School, Minmatar Holm Sebester Republic Military School, or Minmatar Holm Sebester Republic University? Minmatar Holm Sebester Republic University. Same for me. Ooh. 
Min Matar Hum Sebester Republic University with career agent at Hadukago, Min Matar Hum Sebester Republic University with career agent at Malukar, or Min Matar Hum Sebester Republic University with career agent at Embud. Min Matar Hum Sebester Republic University with career agent at Embud. Same for me. Min Matar Hum Sebester Republic University with career agent at Embud Projectile Cannon Specialization, or Min Matar Hum Sebester Republic University with career agent at Embud Missile Specialization. Min Matar Hum Sebester Republic University with career agent at Mbot projectile cannon specialization. <laughs> Die, cannon lover! And now for some PvP shenanigans, where we look at some of the juicy kills that happened in the Gankosphere lately. Little Wolf Anderson from Mrs. Olamshank's fourth grade class in Heck asks, What does an Astero eat? Well, young man, its main diet is herons. Sometimes it gets a big meal of another Astero. Sometimes it even eviscerates those slippery little covert ops frigates. I took out a confessor, um, I mean, Gank Marvin took out a confessor with an Astero once, but mostly they eat herons. Oh, yes. Alright. Oh my god, we're so in range. I have a lethal punisher fit for mucking about in faction warfare space and trying to upset people and uh, then paying them for the privilege. Four of these most lethal punishers makes for a formidable offensive force and can punch way above their tonnage to remove much heavier well, ships than the sum of their mass from the universe. started shooting yes don't warp but don't don't warp don't warp don't warp yeah i'm gonna lose its wreckage i'm gonna you loot it. it next two odd occurrences led to a very fun kill i lost my main troublemaking astero recently so i went off out in my pilgrim one night looking for hapless explorers and boy did I find one. There wasn't a hap within a light year of this dude or lady. Who uses a senesis for exploration? Novel idea, but just get him a stereo, fella. for this one so I love the way the pilgrim descends upon its prey here. what we have for you this week. 
We got a nice few subs recently, so thanks to all who signed on for this journey with us. Thanks to all who helped us with publicity. Thanks to the people who liked the video. Thanks to those who watched, and thanks to my team. We appreciate you all. Gank Marvin is releasing another of his classic gank videos on his channel, From Beyond the Grave. So head over there after to check that out if you want the orange head striped goodness to continue. We'll be back with more of the same before you know it. Until then, from all of us at EIF, take care. Good night.